and girls, Josh Shem here. Thank you all so much once again for tuning in. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to stop the show because once again, we do have Brother Fran all the way from Spain hey, on the guys. line. How you doing? And, and uh, listen up, ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to, uh, again, I'm going to provide a link in the description down below, but I want you all to go and uh, subscribe to Fran's channel because, you know, I, you know, he, he reached out to me and I've reached out to him on several occasions and he's taking time out of his day to collaborate with me on these videos. So I just wanted to stop the show before we get started. Oh my God. I wanted to stop the show before we get started and let you all, uh, make you, uh, tell you all, persuade you all to go and, uh, subscribe to his channel because he's a supporter of, uh, my content and he, and he's taking time out of his day to collaborate with me. And, um, yeah, just make sure you guys go and subscribe to his channel, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. And today, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be um, discussing the past, present, and the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is being led by the man with many hats and the man with little hair, Kevin Feige. Uh, brother Kevin, uh <laughs> Would you like to uh, start it off, brother? Yeah, I think that the first, first of all, we should start talking about Iron Man because it's the first one, not in the mm -hmm. like in the universe, in the MCU uni universe. It's not the first like event, but for us, the mm -hmm. the viewers, it's the first event. And I want to mm -hmm. start talking about Iron Man in a really good way because when I first saw this movie, I was like. Ten, nine years old, ten years old, something like that. And mm -hmm. that was the year that the Dark Knight came out. And you could f you felt like it was a different kind of movie, but it was really serious. Like compared to how the universe is now. It was mm -hmm. really serious. It took like really um morally and ethic problems like the selling of weapons, the war on 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 Iraq and Afghanistan and that stuff. I think mm -hmm. it's an. I mean, I think that people really praise the movie, but it's. I think it's really underrated because it it talked about points and ethical ethics and morals that were really. I mean, compared to what uh, the last MCU movies talk about. I think that mm -hmm. it's one of the best ones because it touches uh, like a lot of human and human things like not just alien invasion no it's like you're selling weapons to these guys and these guys are terrorists and these guys mm -hmm. injured corporation are trying to get you down and people are mm -hmm. complaining about it because they're like acting uh, below the uh, below no the like outside the law and that stuff, and I think it's really underrated. Mm. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, definitely for me. Like I like I said in, a, in our uh, past video. Uh, anytime somebody asks me my favorite MC movie, Iron Man is always gonna come up. And you brought up a lot of great points. I think I was probably like, uh. I think I can't even remember. I feel like I was like 13, maybe, or something like that. And um, like you, I was more excited for the Dark Knight because it's it's the fucking Batman and it's the fucking Joker. And uh, you know, with all due respect, that movie ended up being great. But I feel like um, Iron Man was a bit of a surprise as to how good it was because, like you touched on with the with the the uh, human the human part of it, it it dealt with a lot of real problems that felt real that you don't see in a lot of Marvel movies that are the, a lot of the present Marvel movies you don't see a lot of those same problems like you uh, suggested the selling of weapons and not only that it also to me it also had one of the better Marvel villains with Obadiah Stane you know because you know I when I first saw the movie I was pretty shocked that he was the one that was trying to basically fuck Tony over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, because mm -hmm. it's like a, it's some something really repetitive in the MCU movies. Like the villain is someone that is really, really 
a look alike the hero like for example in the incredible hulk you have hulk and you have like the abomination and they are almost the same thing in thor you have mm -hmm. like loki and that stuff and they're kind of but in iron man the, com the it's really complex because the vi the villain is not only a, like a physical villain is someone ha that is trying to take away your legacy your company your name your weapons your projects your armors that you're building i i think that mm -hmm. he's a really good villain because of that because he's not just like i'm gonna punch you and i'm gonna kill everyone you love that's really s s typical but he's gonna take everything that tony stark has worked on and make it make it for himself mm -hmm. exactly oh that, that that's that's brilliant man let me ask you because you uh just talked about it and that was a movie i wanted to discuss what is your um initial re uh thoughts on the incredible hulk as a movie i think that is the most criminally underrated movie superhero movie i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, and and uh go 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 ahead i don't want to cut you off please go ahead and i was i watched this movie and i was like you know okay i know the superhero movie but when i saw it again and again at at home in my computer and that stuff i i, mm -hmm. I was watching the hulk and i was like man the, the, this hulk this design like the incredible hulk design is far 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 more better than the mark ruffalo's one like the more mm -hmm. mark ruffalo's one maybe it's more comic accurate i don't even know but you see the incredible hulk's design and he's a scarier like with the Ex with the long hair and the all the muscles are like really marked all the not only like the biceps and that stuff like the little lines that compose the muscles and that stuff it was really really nice and he, he really gave you fear the mike ruffalo once uh, apart from being a clown doesn't <laughs> doesn't make you that doesn't give you that sense of danger yeah and uh yeah it's funny that you mention that about mark ruffalo because um I'm not trying to throw shade, but you know, I was trying to watch uh, Thor Ragnarok this morning in preparation for a video I got dropping. But you know, I just kept sitting there with the with the same look on my face. I'm like, how could they make how could they make the Incredible Hulk such a joke in this movie? And like you touched on on uh, the Incredible Hulk, where I see the difference is uh, Ed Norton's Hulk actually felt ferocious. He felt like this giant green goliath and the same with iron man for me it actually had a pretty imposing villain like you touched on they're pretty much one and the same but i felt like the villain actually caused problems and wasn't the typical mc villain aside from maybe vulture and the netflix villains that we see now you know what i mean yeah because he, like the the villain has some motivations and he, he puts his life and his limits to danger like he injects <clears throat> himself the blood of hulk just to kill him because he's like so focused on killing him and so determined and channeled vision to get him that it gives more depth to the character it's, it's not like in the end is the two of them punching each other but there's a backstory of oh he almost killed me and i i mentally and physically challenged my body to get this blood on me and try to kill him because i am so obsessed obsessed with him that the only thing i i want is killing i mean the the actions are the same as the rest of the villains that are just punching him but there's a backstory there that gives more depth to the character exactly exactly uh brother friend we're 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 um talk we're discussing phase one and um i want to let me ask you this and um i feel that and and i'm gonna ask you if you agree i feel that as a whole aside from maybe iron man 2 and i haven't seen avengers in years so i don't know how it holds up um 
I feel as a whole, Phase One is kind of overlooked or under, maybe not underrated, but overlooked and doesn't get enough credit that it deserves. Would you agree or disagree? I kind of agree with you because they are not like the most spectacle movies. Like they are not the one, the ones that have 100 million CGI shots and that stuff. It's like more. They have CGI and they're really expensive and all, all that stuff, but being the initial and introduction movies to, to the universe, mm -hmm. they are like not that amazing in the sense of uh, Iron Man fights his villain and it's like a punching kind of fight. He fights the, um, the guy with the fucking, what's it called? Like the ropes, electric <laughs> ropes in the second one. And right. And Thor, yeah, and Thor fights these these celestial things, and Captain America fights Red Red Skull. It's like a more mm -hmm. normal punching fight, and I think that people seem to forget these films because there's no that amazing threat or that amazing like the Avengers. In the Avengers, you see an amazing threat, an amazing battle all over New York, all the heroes united, and that, that's why people I think that underrate these kind of movies because they are like more grounded and less amazing and worldwide escalation type of film mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. let me ask you this uh, friend um, since we're also since we're still on phase one um, between the two I feel Thor probably doesn't get enough credit now before the comment section starts throwing stones at me, I do want to say uh, I do feel that Thor, the whole story about him having to come to Earth to be redeemed, I've said uh, countless times before, I feel like that's something that's been seen in other movies. But when looking at Thor Ragnarok, when looking at Thor The Dark World, when looking at... Uh, that whole crazy sequence in Age of Ultron, which I really didn't get. Um, I feel like of the th of Thor's movies, I feel like the first Thor movie was probably was no, not probably was his best movie. I feel like the other two Thor: The Dark World had the problem of focusing too much on uh, Jane. Thor Ragnarok just made a joke of everything and glant and just ran right through moments that could have been significant or moments that should have been important. Would you agree or disagree? Well, I, I said that in another uh, episode, but I, I think that Thor Ragnarok as a movie is really entertainment, but mm -hmm. what it, it, it makes the characters, it's not that good. Because if you see Thor 1, you have like depth uh, to the characters because Thor loses his camera and He's, he's, mm -hmm. he's like bright and all, all that stuff and he has to be like humble again and work hard to, to reclaim his throne and mm -hmm. that's something that you know if you are kind of into a little bit complex movie you're like oh it's cool because this guy is like redeeming himself himself and he's trying to do the, the thing he thinks is good he's not making a joke about everything and in this right. you, in this movie you see like he's really angry and sad because he lost his hammer and his powers and he's willing to give his life to mm -hmm. to save his friends and all that stuff and then you go to Thor Ragnarok and he's like oh I lost my city that I've been fighting o over three <laughs> movies to rule and it's gone mm -hmm. and I'm like just smiling like oh I got a chair that looks like a throne I give a little shrimp to the <laughs> audience and be like, oh, everything's okay. I mean, I think it's underrated because the first one gives more depth to the characters and gives them a purpose and something to fight for. It's not exactly. It's not just an spectacle of lights and action. There's something mm -hmm. more to the to the movie. Yeah, and I felt like Loki, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but thinking back on it, like I said, I haven't seen. Avengers and the first Avengers in years so I can't really uh, talk on it but I feel like Loki as a villain was probably at his best in the first Thor movie just everything um, moving on from that brother friend uh, 
going to Captain a, a hero like Captain America. What uh, which of Captain America's movies do you feel? Well, let, let's do it this way because I feel like that's an easy easier question. How would you rank the Captain America movies and why? Okay, it's top three. I mean, I don't like that Civil War is called Captain America because it's Avengers 3, but whatever. Right. But I'm gonna go like, a, it's gonna be a, a first one is the obviously Winter Soldier. And mm -hmm. the second one is gonna be Civil War and the third one is gonna be First Avengers. But mm -hmm. I'm putting Civil War over the First Avengers because of the spectacle and because it's Avengers 3 and uh, the Avengers movies has always been really good. I think that Civil War has its flaws, but I think it's better than First Avenger because it's like on a higher scale, like bigger action battles, we get to see Spider-Man and all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. and Winter Soldier, the first one, because I think it's, it's the best MCU movie we have ever, that anyone has seen. It's like mm -hmm. the, the most serious, complicated and best one. It's amazing. That, that movie is amazing. I saw it like two weeks ago for the first time and it blew me away. Like I was like, wow, I didn't know that Marvel could do this kind of movies in this universe. <laughs> and, and they and then one, two years later they dropped Thor Ragnarok and you're like, oh, they fucked up again. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, man. Um, I'm gonna um play devil's advocate here. Mine is gonna be obviously uh Captain America: The Winter Soldier. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Captain America: The Winter Soldier, and I'm gonna put the first Avenger over Civil War. And again, I'm gonna get hit in the comment section. I don't care. Um, like you said, uh, The Winter Soldier. It actually took everything serious. The stakes felt real. Um, you know, the conflict between uh, Bucky, a.k.a. Winter Soldier, and uh, Steve was great. And even the uh, older gentleman, uh, I forget it, I forgot his name, uh, played by Robert R uh, Redford, he was an actual uh, really good villain. And the conflict, the conflict felt, uh, felt actually, it, it felt like something that goes on with, uh, with today's politics. I don't know how you know, politics and everything are over in uh, Spain, but it just felt like this political film, and I actually, I actually was pretty moved by it. And even uh, towards the end, you know, in Bucky and uh, Steve's final fight, when he says, "I'm with you to the end of the line," like you know, that scene fucking hit me. Um, with the first Avenger, I feel like it doesn't. Like I said in another video, I feel like it doesn't get enough credit. And uh, Civil War, um, you know, I like it, but I just feel like it's extremely overrated. And I just can't see, I just can't put it anywhere near uh, the Winter Soldier. And, you know, aside from Black Panther and Ant-Man and, uh, like you also said, Spider-Man, I feel like the rest of the movie was just okay to good. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was like... Um you because there's so much spectacle and fights and all that stuff you like close your eyes to the flaws that it has but it has a lot of flaws <laughs> like for example yeah. I, I remember one in the cinema thinking oh people were like oh superman could have said just to bruce to batman hey my mother's in danger help me and everything will be okay but in civil war back is like telling black panther i didn't kill your father and he's like I don't care yeah and it's the same it's exact same thing and it's stupid yeah it's funny how I'm not to cut you off brother it's funny how a lot of what uh DC the DCU gets criticized for Marvel just gets gets multiple passes like just gets free rides into the Rotten Tomato heavens or the Rotten Tomato sunset but uh, that's for another video. Um, you you touched on Spider Man, so um, let me ask you this, uh, brother friend: Do you feel that uh, the MCU did a good job or a great job at uh, incorporating Spider Man into the MCU after uh, the 
deal with Sony uh, happen. Where Spider-Man is always a win. <laughs> so yeah, I think that the way that they introduced him was like smooth, like it was really well done to the story and all that stuff. But just when mm-hmm. you start thinking about it, you're like, how does Tony Stark know who's Spider-Man? No one mm-hmm. talks about it. No one says, oh, we saw him in this surveillance camera. Uh, you're like, oh, okay, they saw him. He just goes to, to his house. N- there's nothing mentioned before that. And he just mm-hmm. goes this, and I know you're Spider-Man. And you're like, mm, how? <laughs> Sorry, explanation, hello? I mean, they don't say anything. He's like, he just appears in, at his home, talks to him, and recruit, recruits him. A kid that is 16 to fight and to maybe die. He's like, mm, mm, mm. It's, I, yeah, I it, it. yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Um, mm, there's so much we could, let me see. Um, I'm gonna say this. I feel that uh, of the two Guardians of the Galaxy movies, um, I feel the first one. I I prefer the first one, and I feel like the only problem I have with the second one is I feel like the second one borrowed too many quips, too many uh, too many of the same type of comedic uh antics that worked for the first one and just crammed them into the second one now having said that i will say that the second one was a lot more emotional and uh it the the second one is one of the few superhero films that uh that made me well up in uh multiple moments particularly obviously the moment with uh yondu telling uh star lord he may have been your uh, father but he wasn't your daddy or whatever and then you know his funeral and everything but ultimately I feel like the first Guardians of the Galaxy reason I guess the reason I like it so much and I appreciate it so much is number one I didn't think I went into that movie with the packed audience and I didn't think that that movie was going to work despite having seen uh, just about every MCU movie up to that point I had I did not think that Guardians of the Galaxy was a movie that was gonna work so you know I guess that's why I have such a fondness for it and prefer it uh, over the second one um brother friend what do you think of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies well I think that the first Guardian of the Galaxy movies is in my top three because mm. it's so rewatchable like you can watch it once a month and it's still funny and it's still amazing and the, car- the, the the thing that makes the movie so good is the um a, the I how to, what's the word in English like the chemistry between the characters and <clears throat> how funny make uh, the the jokes and the fun are made in a way that you're not like forced to love to laugh they are not like made to laugh but you laugh because you know it's a joke it's something really strange. But what I like yeah. the most is like, for for example, um, Drax's humor. In the first one, is like, how, why I'm gonna put a um, finger in his throat? I wanna kill him. And he's like, no, it, this is like an, a, a metaphor or something like that. To, to you're gonna kill him. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. But then in the <laughs> in the second one, he's like, yeah, man, I ha- I have sensitive nipples. And you're like, mm. Mm. yeah, it's just forced. Yeah, I mean, the, the first one, everything was seemed natural, like all the jokes, everything, the I am Groot, all that stuff felt natural, but in the second one, some of the jokes felt really forced, and when I went to see the first one, I was like, wow, this is a really good movie, and I went to see the second one, and I was like, man, it was great, I mean, it's not a bad movie, but we came from the first one, and the first one was really good. And the second one, I think that let a lot of people down. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that that's exactly how I feel. I feel like um, the positives. It, first of all, I don't hate the movie. I just like it a lot less than uh, the first one. And like I said, the big positives for me were, uh, you know, the, the emotional uh, responses responses it got out of me in multiple scenes and. Uh, I guess looking at the scale of it all, it's a lot bigger than the first one was. 
Um, let me ask you this, brother Fran, because I'm thinking about uh, ego uh, in in the second one and Ronan, the accuser, in the first one. What is your um, what is your initial thoughts? What are your what are, what are your initial thoughts on the MCU villains? as a whole it can be from phase one to phase three or just a random select few it can be any of them i think that overall they are really forgettable i mean there are some exceptions like loki or um, uh, ronan i really like ronan and the vulture from homecoming <coughs> they were really good but in the end it's like Hela, well, yeah, she was badass, but no one remembers her. Killmonger, a lot of people like Killmonger. I feel, I, I feel like if you put like an average line in between the uh, MCU villains, of of course, Killmonger is above above it. But I didn't think he was like the best villain the MCU has ever had. I mean, I don't know. Wait for Infinity War. But mm -hmm. in the end, most of the villains are really forgettable, and I think that some that's something that Marvel needs to work on, because if, mm. they, if they had some really really good villains, their their movies were, I mean, they would be amazing. But sometimes yeah. the villain is what it, it draw like um, gets the movie and makes makes it worse. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Um, like like you said, I feel like um, up until recently, they like you like you basically said the villains are just forgettable as hell. With a few exceptions, uh, the only ones I can think of that I that I enjoyed are, of course, uh, well, until Thor Ragnarok, Loki was one. Um, uh, Obadiah Stane from the first Iron Man, Abomination, uh, the guy in uh, Winter Soldier, I can't remember his name, I think his name was Pierce or something like that, uh, obviously Vulture from Homecoming, and uh, obviously Eric Killmonger, those are the only movie villains I can think of that I actually uh, enjoyed, and I enjoyed Doctor Strange, but they just wasted the hell out of uh, Mads Mikkelsen, and um, that's something not to turn, not to switch the, <laughs> not to switch the page to DCEU. But I mean, you know, aside from Enchantress, I feel like in in maybe Ares to a degree, I feel like the DCEU has had some really awesome villains with, uh, you know, Zod and Lex Luthor, and. Um, Aside from, like I said, aside from Enchantress and uh, the other other person, I I feel like they've had uh, better villains. But um, <clears throat> the big thing uh, we're gonna dis one of the big things we're gonna discuss is the Avengers. Um, I'm gonna shoot this question your way, brother friend. Do you um are you a fan of Avengers: Age of Ultron? Age of Ultron. Mm -hmm. For what I've seen. I may be a fan of that movie because I really enjoy it. Like I've seen a lot of people like, wow, it was a letdown. I thought it was gonna be so much better and that stuff. But I went to the cinema with no expectations because with Marvel I've never gone to the cinema with expectations because they're gonna get crushed. And don't get me wrong, people, that's that's a, that applies the same to the DC movies. So no hate. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the cinema like, oh, okay, cool, another Avengers movie, and I was dead, and I, I was like, yeah, the action is good, the villain was good, I, it could have been better if he didn't have those silly jokes for a fucking machine, but whatever. I think that exactly. uh, overall it's a good movie, I think that maybe the first Avengers is better, a better movie, but the second one is be far better than what people in general think. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, I. I generally don't. Uh, I'm not a fan of Age of Ultron. I did like um, Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver in the movie, but I also didn't like how they just 
kill Quicksilver like that, and I feel like that was pretty uh, god awful. But it's it's I guess I could watch it, but I you know ultimately like you, I prefer the first one. But I do like some things out of uh, Age of Ultron. I just feel like like you touched on the villain was the big thing that took took it out took took uh took away from the movie for me you know having them crack jokes in the movie and that's another thing uh brother friend that I'd like to discuss um do you feel like comedy and jokes and humor is a problem for the MCU films listen humor and jokes are never the problem but you need to know how to properly introduce those jokes mm -hmm. because that's the problem you had like in Iron Man 1 you had jokes in <coughs> in what, uh, the other first movies you had jokes and they, they weren't forced but because mm -hmm. Disney bought it the, the same happened to Star Wars you had a few jokes they were funny okay the, the movie is not about fun it's not a fucking comedy it's a superhero movie <laughs> So, you can have some little jokes, it's okay, I don't have any problem, but when you the whole movie is a joke, or you force jokes, like the Sharawana, the orange slides, you're like, oh god, oh god, yeah. like in the first one, you can have Iron Man, like, I, get, I want this Burger King, the, the Whopper, or something like that, and he goes to Burger King, and he gets it, and he's eating it, it's like, well, it's fun, it's something funny, okay, but, but you are fucking trying to kill and fighting your friends and you almost get killed and you drop to the ground and you're asking for orange slides yeah see humor is not the problem the problem is how you introduce it yeah and i think for me it's just with like you know this is the, it's the only movie i can think of that because i'm so disappointed with it um thor ragnarok the thing, the big thing for me is, is too much. It's, it's entirely like everything is a freaking joke. And it's like with Thor Ragnarok, and don't worry, uh, people that are listening, it, the title of this video is not Thor Ragnarok hate. But, uh, you know, the thing is, Thor Ragnarok is just too many jokes. And that's something that I've, um, become worried that they're going to use for future movies. Um, let me ask you this, Fran. Uh, what do you think? Um, do you think that uh, Avengers: Infinity War is gonna be the best Avengers movie? Well, I hope so. <laughs> like, I have like really, 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 really high expectations for that movie. I'm really looking forward to it because you see the trailers and you're like, oh my god, this movie. Like, you're like yeah. this is this is it. Like this is ten years building up to this. We're gonna see the Infinity Stones. We're gonna see how they do it. Hopefully, we see some Avengers or some people, some important people die. It's gonna be mm -hmm. epic. But then you, mm -hmm. you watch the trailers for uh, Iron Man Three, for example. Mm -hmm. The trailers were like. Wow, this terrorist organization is gonna be so dark, everything is like so creepy, all that stuff. And you go to the movie and it's all cranky jokes. The Mandarin is not the Mandarin. And you're like, well, okay. I mean, I don't think that with with Infinity War they're gonna do the same. But for example, the part with the Guardians, everyone said that it was funny. Like, they're gonna have that chemistry of jokes and all that stuff. I just, I mean, I don't care that they have jokes and all that stuff in the spaceship and all that stuff, but if I see a moment in the final battle, like they are facing Thanos in Titan, like in the, we can see in the trailers, and they are like, mm -hmm. someone's about to die because they're gonna get fucked, all, all that stuff, and someone starts making jokes, I'm gonna <laughs> fucking get up and leave the theater. <laughs> like, no joke. Like, Man, just get, just take your ticket back to the one on sale. I demand a refund. Like, if you, I, that, that's the, I mean, I don't care that at the beginning and in the second half of the film, the guardians and some people can make jokes. They're like, okay, this is Marvel. If I, but if I see Thanos or something, or in a really dramatic moment, someone make a joke, I'm gonna shout, 
What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> in, in Spanish, so everyone's gonna look at, at me, but this is, I mean, this is supposed to be the most dramatic thing in superhero movies. Like, a lot of heroes are gonna die. Oh my god, this is amazing. And if I see a single fucking cranky joke, and even, <laughs> even if Thanos makes one joke, Thanos, one joke at the beginning of the film, he makes one joke, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna take two points from the final score. Like, if it's, if it's three to ten, I'm gonna give it an eight. Because I can't stand, in dramatic moments, jokes. That's the only thing that I can't stand. Thor Ragnarok. That, uh, that's right, and the most, most exam the best example is Civil War, for example. I think that yep. uh, Infinity War is gonna be the best Avengers movie if they take it seriously. They're not Thank gonna you. take it fully seriously because it's Marvel, but please, make, give us some Winter Soldier you know, kind of movie, and I will be happy with it. I don't ask mm. for anymore. Yeah. Uh, brother friend, I'm, uh, we're gonna keep going. I think this is probably, this is probably, uh, we, I feel like all our videos are the best, but this is one of the best ones. Um, let me ask you this, brother friend, because we keep on, I know we keep on, uh, talking about Thor. Um, do you feel like it was a mis uh, a mistake? Because there was a commentator in my comment section, and uh, I don't think he was butt hurt. I think he was just trying to counter my argument. And um, do you think it's a fair argument that um, he said basically that because they established Thor uh, as a a jokey kind of character that that should be that it shouldn't be, that I shouldn't have had a problem with Thor Ragnarok, you know, with how he was in Thor Ragnarok. And, you know, like we like we touched on earlier, Thor, you know, the first Thor movie, it had jokes too. But I feel like the first Thor movie, like like good superhero movie like good or great superhero movies do, there's a time to be serious and there's a time to be funny. And Thor, the first Thor movie is an example that did that, whereas I feel Thor Ragnarok didn't. But to that uh, to that user's argument, would you agree with his argument or disagree that uh, um, Thor uh, that Thor Ragnarok is okay because Thor was established as a comedic character? Well, I'm not gonna agree with him because who thinks that he was established as a comedic character? <laughs> uh, how many jokes, forced jokes, do you see in the first movie? Did he saw the first, the same movie that I saw? Mm -hmm, like, exactly. Listen, you can say that you know Thor is a funny guy. He sometimes gives us jokes. And I'm gonna agree with that because that's what he does. But the problem with Thor Ragnar, it's not some jokes. The whole movie is a fucking joke. Yes. It's, it's not that he's giving us. You know, every twenty minutes he's giving us a joke, and you're like, okay, this guy is. You know, he's gives us the cranky jokes. The Thor Ragnarok is every three minutes. Yeah. The devil say yeah. no. The no, this is my this guy that now they can't see me. It's like what's this humor? Like this is not Thor. This is a comedian. Yeah. What, what's going on here? Like and a lot of scenes that were just like <sighs> the the one with the devils and Anus. You're like listen you're making laugh the 10 years old but there's here's people that is 25 that are like mm -hmm. um, what <laughs> how could you call something like that the devil's anus like oh, what's wrong with you and you're telling me yeah that, no, no he's you know from the other movies he's funny listen he gave us three four five jokes in every movie in third Ragnarok, there's like a 300 fucking jokes per minute the whole dialogue is a, is a joke. I don't understand yeah. that guy. Yeah, and what 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 pisses me off more is is um I I have been hyping that movie to a lot of people. I'm like I I I was the guy that was saying you know what y'all have been talking about Thor for years, but this is gonna be his best movie. And then a uh, a few weeks before the movie release, the producer of the movie was even lamenting it as Thor's. Captain America Winter Soldier 
So you can imagine, you know, me going into the movie. I'm like, okay, this is going to be something epic to see. And given that the storyline is adapting, you know, like you like you touched on uh, in our last video, none of it should be taken taken as a as a joke. But uh, moving on from that, um, let me ask you this, brother friend: What is your thought on Black Panther? I, I was, because there's a, I, I was there's a you. lot. That's the one you were gonna ask. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of um, varying opinions. Um, there was a a post on Reddit a few weeks ago on uh, our movies um, by by a user who said that he basically said that I don't see the hype uh, surrounding Black Panther, and it's um, the highest grossing uh, superhero movie uh, domestically, and I think it outgrossed Titanic even. Um, what are your thoughts on the movie? Do you think it's up there with uh, great movies like Iron Man, Spider Man Two, and uh, um, for us, Man of Steel and BVS, but um, and um, X Men: Days of Future Past? Do you feel it lives up to the hype, or it's a little overhyped? Well, first of all, I don't want people to kill me. Okay, I'm not gonna <laughs> give you your address or anything. I am. I just live in Spain. You don't even know where. Okay, I'm safe now. <laughs> It's, and maybe you are gonna kill me, but it's the most overhyped and overrated movie I've ever seen. Uh oh, uh oh. Who, who, okay, now. Okay. Definitely. Go into detail, bro. In Rotten Tomatoes, they give it like a 97? No, 90, 95, something like that. 97. 97. I, I I mean everyone was talking about it like wow this movie is amazing blah 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 mm -hmm. and I was like okay I went to the cinema and uh, to watch it I always watch the movies in the cinema in original version like in English and I went uh -huh. there with my friend and I'm like okay 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 the movie finishes okay and I was thinking my way home like how is this a 97% like it was great, great photography, great, mm -hmm. I mean, great f photography, great acting, a really good villain. Like every, this is maybe controversial, but everyone was like, you know, Killmonger in the end was right, and he's like, no, he's not, he wasn't right. <laughs> he wanted to take guns and kill innocent people because what some people did to their people 300 years ago. ago, ago and people are like, oh, he was right, he was right, and, and I'm like, no, he may not be right. <laughs> and But the whole movie, I think it's great. I mean, I think it's like a 9, 8.5, something like that, but they can say it's better than The Dark Knight or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I even I don't think it's better. <laughs> when, when, when people were saying that, I'm like, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's better than The Dark Knight. It's great, but in the end is another superhero movie like there's nothing maybe it's controversial because the the topics that they uh, they talk about in the movie with race and all that all that stuff but mm -hmm. and all the toxicity toxicity that came around the movie like a lot of mm -hmm. people saying that if you didn't didn't like the movie you were a racist or something like that and i was like what now I can't even dislike a movie because you say it. I don't know. I think it's right. a great superhero movie, but it's not in that oh. top five. Like there, it's he's it's not at the level of Spider-Man Two or The Dark Knight. No way. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, let um. Let where should I begin? <laughs> where should I, um. I'm going to say this, I think um, for the for the time that it released, Disney, um, and I have to, this is one time I'm going to commend Disney or whoever scheduled the release date, you know, February um, is obviously Black History Month and, you know, them pushing it to, to release in Black History Month, obviously people are going to flock to the cinemas to see uh, a black superhero, so I think ultimately, similar to what I said about uh, Spider-Man and one of my Spider-Man vias, Black Panther had a lot going for it that a lot of superhero movies 
don't necessarily have. Number one is targeting, like you like you touched on, is targeting a certain demographic. And um, <clears throat> it's interesting you bring up that Rotten Tomatoes thing because I almost forgot about that, but I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and obviously, what we well, what we've seen with the Marvel movies, we all know the critics are just gonna just gonna suck off Kevin Feige and uh, MCU people and the MCU movies. They're not uh, gonna give a MC movie a bad rating, even when certain fans say otherwise. And, um, you know, when I saw Black Panther, you know, I was affected by it because, you know, there's not a whole lot of, there's not a whole lot of Black lead um, superheroes, obviously, aside from Luke Cage. Now we have Black Lightning on the CW and, you know, guys like that. But there's not a whole lot of uh, Black led superhero movies. So, I think number one for the uh, time it released, and because you know it's it's a big movie, it's all black cast. I think it had a lot going for it. And to sum it up, when I saw the movie, I thought it was very good. I thought it was very good, and I thought um, compared to obviously Thor Ragnarok and uh, Civil War, I thought I think it's probably it's definitely one of the better movies of Phase Three. And um, I think it had one of the best villains out of the MCU. But again, people were saying he's better than, you know, the Joker. And be- and then that goes into the talk of it being better than the Dark Knight and being up there with Spider-Man 2. And I'm like, well, I did say it was very good. I didn't say that it's a great movie. But that's an interesting, um, that's an interesting point you brought up because I actually wanted to touch on that in this video, and I'm uh, glad you brought it up. Brother Fran, uh, something I've noticed with uh, a lot of critics and, you know, not just Rotten Tomatoes and uh, the Christopher Stuckmans and uh, uh, Jeremy Johns of YouTube and guys of that nature, something I've noticed is that uh, critics seemingly... um, First of all, they give the MCU a lot of passes on things that they don't give uh, other superhero movies passes on. And it seems like, it's almost like, you know, a lot of people are saying that Disney is paying uh, Marvel to, I mean, uh, Disney is paying Rotten Tomatoes to trash other superhero movies. Um, the question I want to ask you is, do you feel like there, do you feel like there is a bias amongst critics to where they feel like they need to give or they just feel compelled to give uh, MCU movies a good rating? Well, I think that in general people are, are so used to see Marvel movies that when another one comes out is 90, mm-hmm. 90% as same as the last one, so if the last one is good, this one's gonna be good. Mm-hmm. I think that in general the critics give Marvel uh, Marvel movies a good rating because it's what they are used to see. Like yeah. if you imagine, you are you go you're at your place one day and it's Monday and you eat I don't know a burger, mm-hmm. and the second day on Tuesday you eat a burger, and then Wednesday a burger, and Thursday a burger, and you're like, wow, this I don't. Burgers are, are great. I like them. So I'm gonna give every single day the same rating because all of them are great now mm-hmm. Your mom's co- your mom comes. I don't know Saturday and he's like, oh, we're gonna eat. I don't know Beef and you're like beef No, I want burgers. That's what I what I like and then you eat beef and even though you may like it You give it a, a bad critic and that's like a, met- a metaphor for Marvel and DC. Like, yeah. critics are so used to the same kind of movie. Like, beginning, middle, end, villain defeats the hero, the hero comes back and defeats the villain. And mm-hmm. that when a different movie comes up, they are like, oof, different. I don't like different. I like Mar- Marvel because every single movie is almost the same as the last one and that's not something bad but you can't be 
proud of yourself like oh yeah we are, our movies are the best ones because blah 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 no the critics are used to your type of superhero movie because you give us four movies a year that's why they give, a, they give you that rating mm -hmm. that's, that's what I feel mm. Mm. man <laughs> you, you, you cook in a day you cook in a day um let's see um i know we touched on this uh in uh in the daredevil video and uh i pretty much know what you're uh gonna say but i'm gonna try and uh ask it in a different way um regarding the netflix characters brother friend i know you said that you wouldn't want to see uh guys like daredevil or kingpin in the mcu movies and um As you know, I'm a big, as many know, I'm a big fan of Spider-Man. So seeing Kingpin in a Spider-Man movie is like a dream, given how well Kingpin is played on uh, Daredevil. Um, let me ask you this, brother friend. Do you feel that, um, do you feel that if the um, MCU movies were, weren't the typical, like, weren't like, like what we saw with Thor Ragnarok with, with the comedy If you feel if if they were more like say Captain America, the Winter Soldier, or at least at the very least, obviously more serious, would you be more in willing to see the Netflix characters cross over? Yeah, I mean, if they took the Captain America, uh, Winter Soldier kind of aesthetic, nope. I will be fine mm -hmm. with the Netflix Netflix characters going to the big screen. But they didn't because Winter Soldier is from 2014 and we are in 2018 and we haven't seen any Winter Soldier. Like, I hope Infinity War is that Winter Soldier, but right now we don't know. And the, the path that the Marvel movies are following right now, I don't want to see one, uh, for example, Dark Devil, one of my favorite superheroes, be wasted in the big screen like in his little world he's really good the series are good is good everything's okay the character is all right but you put him in the big screen with the path and the way of making movies that marvel has right now and you're gonna destroy the character like people are gonna go to see the movie like who's this this is not the devil i'm used to see like who's this guy who is making jokes all the time Like in the in the series, I don't even remember a single joke when he's in costume. Like when he's been Mac Mad Murdock, he does make some some jokes, but in costume he doesn't make any jokes. And I don't want to see his potential and his whole character ruined by three jokes in a in a movie. So I, I, I will pass on that one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I um that that that's 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 a that's an excellent point and that leads into my next question uh brother Fran um do you feel like and I think I touched on this earlier we talked about a lot um do you feel like comedy do you feel like comedy has taken you as a viewer out of the MC out of the MCU movies as a whole And um, do you feel like they need to be more serious going forward or they just need to have an even balance? The whole thing is that they have to get that balance. Like, mm -hmm. wh when they need the films, need the film needs you to be funny, be funny. When the film needs you to be dramatic or sad or happy or angry, let mm -hmm. it be. Like, I don't, I said it before, I don't have a problem with humor. What I don't, I, I can't stand is humor when there's no humor. Like, you can't put right. humor when fucking Asgard is being destroyed. You can't put right. humor when you are fighting your own friends to the de to death. <laughs> I can see humor, you know, I don't know, he's fighting a uh, Hulk and he sees him and he, he you know, he talks to him. And they are making jokes. Okay, I'm all right with that. But mm -hmm. the whole thing is that it didn't drag me out as a viewer. But the whole the, the the movies were evolving 
in, a, in such a way that in the end I just was watching the movies like okay good movie never never think about it again I don't, I don't even know if I'm gonna see it again in blu-ray or something like that because right. I got tired of the movies being so forced into humor that the whole movie did it could have been like it's like the meme that I see a lot is like we were this close to greatness like this close <coughs> from Star Wars and you fucked it up like you were this <laughs> close to making a really good movie with movies like those Doctor Strange or Civil War or something like that like you were this close but you had to put like five cranky jokes and fuck the whole movie up but mm. that's the that's what I don't really like about Marvel and I have been moving forward DC because in the past they made more serious movies that I I mean if you like talking about the the audience if you like simpler movies well, well I mean better for you like I don't have any problems but personally I enjoy the most serious ones like BBS and Man of Steel uh, that's, right. that's what I enjoy. There's no problem if we, you enjoy the Marvel movies. There's n no problem. But uh, I mean, uh, as me as a person, that's what dragged me out of of Marvel and pushed me to DC. Mm. And that that's something uh, that gets that that that's always a counter argument whenever somebody uh, even even at me because I've I've often uh, you know said that. Uh, Marvel doesn't take enough risk or they're always using jokes in a moment that should, that we both you and I both agreed on should be serious and it's always countered with what well uh yeah but you know um this joke was funny and you know uh it doesn't have to be serious all the time but the thing about it is like we <laughs> like I'm keep I'm repeating myself because y'all keep saying <laughs> because people keep saying this I keep repeating myself it's like we, like you and I just said, we don't have a problem with humor whatsoever. It's just when you put, when you put too much humor and, and, and just stuff it in the whole movie or, you know, uh, take a serious moment and make a joke out of it. That's what, that's what bothers me. And, you know, we're, uh, this is the last, uh, topic I think we're going to touch on in this video, brother Frey. And I do appreciate you, uh, coming through again and stop the show real fast ladies and gentlemen as i said uh you guys do go subscribe to uh france channel i will leave a link in the description and uh, also try to link it in the comments section because again he doesn't have to uh collaborate with me he's taking time out of his day to collaborate with me on these videos and i appreciate it and i appreciate you all watching my videos and you know it will it will mean a lot to me and him if you will subscribe to his channel but um brother fred um the x as you, i'm sure you're aware um disney uh sadly brought out um fox which means they're gonna get their hands on the x-men and the fantastic four now fantastic four i feel i feel like that's the right move for 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 those characters because I feel like not only there's a lot of potential there for uh the Fantastic Four with guys like Mr. Fantastic Galactus, um the scrolls which I think are gonna be in Captain Marvel, um and even uh the smaller characters like Human Torch. There's a lot of untapped potential with Fantastic Four. However, um, having been a fan of the X-Men characters in the X-Men movies, um, like, for example, Logan and um, Legion on FX, X2, Days of Future Past, something I've always admired about the X-Men movies, and this isn't a shot at, at the MCU, it's just facts, is that they've always tried to do something different with each movie. And even when they stumble or fail with movies like X-Men Origins and to some degree X-Men Apocalypse, even though I don't think <clears throat> Apocalypse is a bad movie, um, they've always tried to do something different. And like we've discussed with the comedy and everything, um, I, I'm worried that they're going to do the same with the X-Men characters. I, you know, Like I said, I'm fine with 
Fantastic Four, but I'm worried they're going to take that that unique that unique thing I mentioned about the X Men movies away and basically make it follow the MC the current MCU formula. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, the MC, the MCU and the X Men, Deadpool, and Fantastic Four joining the MCU? Well, I've never been like a really big fan of X Men. I only like like one movie from the X Men, and that's Logan. Log- mm. Logan will be in my top five superhero movies of all time. That movie is yes. a piece of art. <laughs> and yeah, it's a great movie. I mean, it's good that Disney bought Fox, but at the same time, it's not good. It's good because you're gonna see a lot of more superheroes together in the same movie. Mm-hmm. But the bad thing is that Disney is making a monopoly of the of of movies like they are buying Star Wars, uh, Marvel, now Fox, <laughs> like they I mean they're gonna be by DC at this at this rate, and <laughs> that, that's something that I don't like because the more a company buys other uh, companies in the same like. Uh, industry mm-hmm. the less different movies you have like i like superhero movies because it's not only about the superheroes and the action and that stuff because you have different kind of superhero movies you have like the avengers mm-hmm. that is simple simple uh, plot with great villain the superheroes come together and you're like oh that's a great movie you have the, mm-hmm. the dark knight type of a uh, type of movie you have logan's type of movies Mm-hmm. You have some serious and funny films about uh, all, ab- all about uh, uh, all around the MCU, but the bad thing about that is that they're gonna take all the characters and make them make them act in the same way, like cranky j- cranky jokes, simple plot, blah 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 <coughs> blah blah blah, and that's not true because what I liked it, it was like. I mean, diversity, yeah, like, you go to the cinema and you watch, I don't know, Civil War, and you're like, oh, this is kind of fun, okay, that was great, and you can go and watch BBS, and wow, this is more serious, blah, 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 and you can watch X-Men, and you're like, oh, this is a different type of pop topic, blah, 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 but now everything is gonna be, like, so centralized that you're not gonna have any variety. You're gonna watch a movie and you're, and you're gonna be in the cinema like, wow, I, I feel like I've seen this movie before. Because that's mm-hmm. what happens to me with the MCU movie. That, mm-hmm. that, that's the only fear that I have, that they're gonna make every single movie the same. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this, brother Fran, and we'll quickly close out. There's a lot more that I'd like to touch on, but this video is well over an hour. Um, what are your favorite uh MCU movies? Top three or top five? <laughs> uh, let's do let's do top five. Top five, okay. Mm, 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 mm. I think the fifth one will be the Avengers. The first one. The sec the fourth will be like um. I think Ragnarok. Because mm-hmm. it really entertained me in the cinema. Third one will be a, 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 a what is it? Incredible Hulk. I really enjoyed mm-hmm. that movie. Second one, a, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. And mm-hmm. in first place, the Captain America Winter Soldier. What's mm. your, what's your top five? Top five, man. Yeah, no debating. Um. Top five, I'm glad you started from the bottom because that makes it slightly easier. Um, fifth would have to be uh fifth would have to be I wanna say Spider Man Homecoming. Fourth would have to be uh, fourth would have to be guard the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Third would have to be um, third would have to be Iron Man. No, 
I'm saying that wrong. Third, yeah, third would actually, yeah, third actually is Iron Man. Second would be. Second would be Doctor Strange. I'm sorry, I like it. I know the villain's bad, but I like it. Second, and first would be obviously Captain America, uh, the Winter Soldier, for sure. I guess for me, though, Doctor Strange, the whole, uh, I like I like I talk, I uh, actually chatted with somebody about it. it's the whole mystical thing and uh, the visuals and the trippiness of it really uh, was really different than where I've seen in past MC movies and I really dug it. I know the villain, the villain sucks and you know everything and it borrows a lot from the first Iron Man and uh, even Batman Begins, but you know I really dig it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, you got any uh, more questions you want to shoot my way? No, because we have like one hour and five minutes of video and i think that's really enough <laughs> yeah all right ladies and gentlemen uh for the 1500th time you guys make sure you go subscribe to uh Fran's channel and do be on the lookout because we will collab in the foreseeable future and uh, i appreciate you all watching Fran. as always i do appreciate you uh stopping by and that'll be all for this video take care bye bye